The Creation The Story of Creation When above the earth was not named, and beneath the earth bore no name, and the primeval Absu, who begat them, and Mumu and Tiamat, the mother of all of them, their waters were mingled together, and no field was formed, no marsh seen, when no one of the gods had been called into being, and none bore a name, and no destinies were fixed. Then were created the gods in the midst of heaven. Lakmu and Lakamu were called into being. Ages increased. Anshar and Kishar were created, and over them, long were the days, then came there forth Anu, their son, Anshar and Anu, and the god Anu, Nidimud, whom his fathers, his begetters, abounding in all wisdom, he was exceedingly strong, there was no rival, so were established and the great gods. But Tiamat and Absu were in confusion, they were troubled and in confusion. Absu was not diminished in might, and Tiamat lapsed into silence. She smote their deeds. Their way was not good. They, then Absu, the begetter of the great gods, summoned Mumu, his messenger, and said unto him, O Mumu, messenger that rejoicest my heart, come, let us go unto Tiamat. They went, and before Tiamat they lay down. They consulted on a plan concerning the gods, their sons. Absu opened his mouth and said, And unto Tiamat, the brilliant, he spake a word, Their way. By day I cannot rest, I cannot lie down. I will destroy their way, I will disperse them, that the clamor may be appeased, that we may lie down. When Tiamat heard these words, she was furious and cried for. She went into a terrible anger, she conceived evil in their hearts. All that which we have made, we will destroy. Lo, their ways are becoming evil, and let us... Mumu answered, and gave counsel unto Absu. A hostile counsel was the counsel of Mumu. Come, their way is strong, but destroy thou it. So shalt thou have rest by day, by night thou shalt lie down. Absu hearkened to him, and his face brightened. The evil designs which he had conceived against the gods, his children, he feared. Upon his knees he took him, and kissed him. Because of the evil which they all had planned, they changed their... they were agitated. Lamentation. They sat in sorrow. Then Ea, who knoweth all things, perceived their design. He fixed. He went to make a pure incantation. Misery. Anu. An avenger. He shall confound Tiamat. He. Forever. The evil. He spake. Thy. He hath conquered and he weepeth and sitteth in tribulation. Of fear, we shall not lie down. Apsu is laid waste, and Mumu, who were taken captive, in thou didst, that we may lie down, they will smite, that we may lie down. Thou shalt take vengeance for them, and the tempest shalt thou. And Tiamat hearkened unto the word of the bright god, and said, Thou shalt give, let us make war. The gods in the heavens, for the gods, the creators. They banded themselves together and at the sight of Tiamat advanced. They were furious. They devised mischief night and day without rest. They take up the combat. They devastate. They rage. They join their forces. They organize battle. Umukubar, who formed all things, made also weapons invincible. She spawned monster serpents, sharp of tooth and merciless in carnage. With poison instead of blood, she filled their bodies. Terrible dragons she clothed with terror. With splendor she decked them. She made them of lofty appearance. Whoever beheld them, terror overcame him. Their bodies reared up and none could withstand their attack. She set up serpents and dragons and the monster Lakamu, and hurricanes and furious dogs and scorpion men and mighty tempests and fish men and rams. They bore pitiless weapons without fear of the fight. Passant were her orders. None could resist them. In all, eleven monsters of this kind she created. Among the gods who were her firstborn, who formed her troop, she exalted Kingu. Among them she made him great, to march before the troops, to lead the throng, to seize the weapons, to advance, to bring the attack. The primacy in the combat, the control of the fight, she entrusted to him. In costly raiment she made him sit. I have uttered the spell in the assembly of the gods. I have made thee lord. The lordship over all the gods I have entrusted to thee. Be thou exalted, thou mine only spouse. May the Anunnaki exalt thy name over all. She gave him the tablets of destiny. On his breast she placed them. Thy command shall not fail. 
the word of thy mouth shall be established. When Kingu was exalted, and had received the power of Anu, he decreed destiny among the gods his sons, saying, The opening of your mouth shall quench the fire god, the strong in combat shall increase his strength. The Second Tablet Tiamat made strong her handiwork, evil she devised among the gods her children. To avenge Apsu, Tiamat planned evil. As she had collected her army, against Ea she marshaled them. Ea listened to this word, and he was sadly afflicted and sat in sorrow. The days went by, and his anger was appeased, and to the palace of Anshar his father he made his way. He went before Anshar, the father who begat him. All that Tiamat had planned he announced to him. Tiamat our mother has conceived a hatred against us, an assembly has she made, she rages in anger. All the gods have turned to her, even those whom ye have created march at her side. They have banded together, they advance at Tiamat's side. They are furious, they plan without rest night or day, they prepare for battle, they fume, they rage. They have joined their forces, they prepare for battle. Umukubar, who created all things, hath made in addition invincible weapons. She hath spawned monstrous serpents, sharp of tooth, merciless in carnage. With poison instead of blood she filled their bodies. Terrible dragons she clothed with terror. With splendor she decked them. She made them of lofty appearance. Whoever beholds them, terror overcomes him. Their bodies rear up and none can withstand their attack. She set up serpents and dragons in the monster Lakamu. And hurricanes and furious dogs and scorpion men. And mighty tempests and fish men and rams. They bear pitiless weapons without fear of the fight. Besant are her orders, none can resist them. In all, eleven monsters of this kind she created. Among the gods who were her firstborn, who formed her troop, she exalted Kingu. Among them she made him great. To march before the troops, to lead the throng, to seize the weapons, to advance, to begin the attack. The primacy in combat, the control of the fight, she entrusted to him. In costly raiment she made him sit, saying, I have uttered the spell. In the assembly of the gods I have made thee lord. The lordship over all the gods I have entrusted to thee. Be thou exalted, thou mine only spouse. May the Anunnaki exalt thy name over all. She gave him the tablets of destiny, on his breast she placed them. Thy command shall not fail, the word of thy mouth shall be established. When Kingu was exalted and had received the power of Anu, he decreed destiny among the gods of his son, saying, the opening of your mouth shall quench the fire god. The strong in combat shall increase his strength. When Anshar heard that Tiamat was mightily in revolt, he smote his loins, he bit his lips. His mind was not at peace. His... he sounded a battle cry. Battle. Mumu and Absu thou hast cast down. But Tiamat has exalted Kingu. Where is her rival? Reflection. The gods... Nidamund. Anshar unto his son addressed the word the mighty warrior, whose power is great, whose onslaught resists. Go and stand before Tiamat, that her spirit may be appeased, her heart calmed. But if she hearken not to thy word, then shalt thou speak our message, that she may be pacified. He heard the word of his father Anshar, and turned his path to her. Toward her he made his way. Anu draw nigh. He looked into the open jaws of Tiamat, but he could not endure her presence. He turned back. Anshar, he spoke to him. She drew nigh, her hand towards me. Anshar was silent in sorrow. He looked at the ground and moaned. To Ea he lifted up his head. The leader, the chief of all of them, has put Anu to the fight. Their might has been made surprisingly great. A god nowhere leads against thee. Before Tiamat he went not up. Anshar, father of the gods, greatly. Thou art my son, who opens wide his heart. To the battle shalt thou approach, he shall see thee in peace. And the Lord rejoiced at his father's word, and he drew nigh and stood before Anshar. Anshar looked upon him, and his heart was filled with joy. He kissed his lips, and fear departed from him. O oh, my father, let not the word of thy lips be covered. O oh, let me accomplish all that is in my heart. O oh, Anshar, let not the word of thy lips be covered. O oh, let me accomplish all that is in my heart. What man is it that has brought battle against thee? Tiamat, who is a woman, attacks thee with arms. Rejoice and be glad. The neck of Tiamat shalt thou trample underfoot. Rejoice and be glad. The neck of Tiamat shalt thou swiftly trample underfoot. O my son, who knowest all wisdom, appease Tiamat, 
with thy pure incantation, set out speedily on thy way. Thy blood shall not be poured out, thou shalt return again. The Lord rejoiced at his father's word. His heart exalted, and he spoke to his father. O Lord of the gods, destiny of the great gods, if I, your avenger, do enchain Tiamat and give you life, make an assembly, exalt my destiny. In Upshukinaku, seat yourselves joyfully together. When I speak even as you, may I decree fate. That which I do shall remain unchanged. It shall not be changed. It shall not fail. The word of my lips. The third tablet. Anshar opened his mouth, and unto Gaga, his minister, he spoke the word. O Gaga, thou minister that rejoiceth my heart, unto Lakmu and Lakamu will I send thee. The order of my heart thou canst comprehend. Thou shalt bring before me, let the gods, all of them, make ready for a feast. At a banquet let them sit. Let them eat bread, let them mingle wine. For Marduk, their avenger, let them decree destiny. Go, Gaga, stand before them. All that I say to thee, repeat thou to them, saying, Anshar, your son, hath sent me. The command of his heart, he hath made me to know. He saith that Tiamat, our mother, has conceived a hatred against us. An assembly has she made, she rages in anger. All the gods have turned to her. Even those whom ye have created march at her side. They have banded together, they advance at Tiamat's side. They are furious, they plan without rest night or day. They prepare for battle, they fume, they rage. They have joined their forces, they prepare battle. Umukubar, who created all things, hath made in addition invisible weapons. She has spawned monstrous serpents. Sharp of tooth, merciless in carnage. With poison instead of blood, she filled their bodies. Terrible dragons she clothed with terror. With splendor she decked them, she made them of lofty appearance. Whoever beholds them, terror overcomes him. Their bodies rear up and none can withstand their attack. She set up serpents and dragons and the monster Lakamu, and hurricanes and furious dogs and scorpion men, and mighty tempests and fishmen and rams. They bear pitiless weapons without fear of the fight. Basanta her orders, none can resist them. In all, eleven monsters of this kind she created, among the gods who were her firstborn, who formed her troop. She exalted Kingu, among them she made him great, to march before the troops, to lead the throng, to seize the weapons, to advance, to bring the attack. The primacy in the combat, they control the fight. She entrusted to him, in costly raiment she made him sit, saying, I have uttered the spell, in the assembly of the gods I have made thee lord. The lordship over all the gods I have entrusted to thee. Be thou exalted, thou mine only spouse, May the Anunnaki exalt thy name over all. She gave him the tablets of destiny. On his breast she placed them, saying, Thy command shall not fail. The words of thy mouth shall be established. When Kingu was exalted and had received the power of Anu, he decreed destiny among the gods his sons, saying, The opening of your mouth shall quench the fire god. The strong in combat shall increase his strength. I have set Anu, but he could not withstand her presence. Nidamun was afraid and turned back. But Marduk is ready, the director of the gods, your son, to set out against Tiamat. His heart has moved him. He opened his mouth and he spoke to me, saying, If I, your avenger, do enchain Tiamat and give your life, make an assembly, exalt my destiny. In Upshakinaku, seat yourselves joyfully together. With your word in my stead will I decree destiny. That which I do shall remain unchanged. It shall not be changed. It shall not fail, the word of my lips. Hasten therefore and fix quickly your destiny, that he may go and attack your strong enemy. Gaga went, he made his way, and before Lakmu and Lakamu, the gods his fathers, humbly did he make obeisance, and kissed the ground at their feet. He humbled himself, then he stood up and spoke to them, saying, Anshar, your son has sent me, the purpose of his heart he has made known to me. He says that Tiamat, our mother, has conceived a hatred against us. An assembly she has made, she rages in anger. All the gods have turned to her, even those whom ye have created march at her side. They have banded together, they advance at Tiamat's side. They are furious, they plan without rest night or day. They prepare for battle, they fume, they rage. They have joined their forces, they prepare battle. 
Umukubar, who created all things, hath made in addition invincible weapons. She has spawned monstrous serpents, sharp of tooth, merciless in carnage. With poison instead of blood, she filled their bodies. Terrible dragons she clothed with terror. With splendor she decked them. She made them of lofty appearance. Whoever beholds them, terror overcomes him. Their bodies rear up and none can withstand their attack. She set up serpents and dragons and the monster Lakamu, and hurricanes and furious dogs and scorpion men, the mighty tempests of fishmen and rams. They built pitiless weapons without fear of the fight. Poisson are her orders. None can resist them. In all, eleven monsters of this kind she created, among the gods who were her firstborn, who formed her troop. She exalted Kingu. Among them she made him great, to march before the troops, to lead the throng, to seize the weapons, to advance, to begin the attack. The primacy in combat, the control of the fight, she entrusted to him. In costly raiment she made him sit, saying, I have uttered the spell in the assembly of the gods. I have made thee lord. The lordship over all the gods I have entrusted to thee. Be thou exalted, thou mine only spouse. May the Onunaki exalt thy name over all. She gave him the tablets of destiny. On his breast she placed them, saying, Thy command shall not fail. The words of thy mouth shall be established. When Kingu was exalted and had received the power of Anu, he decreed destiny among the gods his sons, saying, The opening of your mouth shall quench the fire god. The strong in combat shall increase his strength. I have sent Anu, but he could not withstand her presence. Nidamu was afraid and turned back. But Marduk is ready, the director of the gods, your son. To set out against Tiamat, his heart has moved him. He opened his mouth and spoke to me, saying, If I, your avenger, do enchain Tiamat and give you life, make an assembly, exalt my destiny, and Upshik and Aku seat yourselves joyfully together. When I speak, even as you I may decree fate, that which I do shall remain unchanged. It shall not be changed, it shall not fail, the word of my lips. Hasten therefore and fix quickly your destiny, that he may go and attack your strong enemy. Lakmu and Lakamu heard, they cried aloud. All of the Igigi complained bitterly, saying, Because of what enmity is it that they... We do not understand the deed of Tiamat. When they gathered together they went, the great gods, all of them who decree destiny. They entered before Anshar, they filled, they kissed one another in the assembly. They made ready the feast, at the banquet they sat. They ate bread, they mingled the wine. The sweet drink made them drunken. By drinking, they were drunken. Their bodies were filled. They shouted aloud. Their heart was exalted. Then for Marduk, their avenger, did they decree destiny. The fourth tablet. They prepared for him a princely seat. Before his fathers, he took his place as sovereign. Thou art most honored among the great gods. Thy destiny is beyond compare. Thy command is Anu. O Marduk, thou art most honored among the great gods. Thy destiny is beyond compare, thy command is Anu. In all time they command shall not be changed. To exalt and to abase lie in thy hand. Established shall be thy word of thy mouth. Resist thy command. None among the gods shall transgress thy limits. Maintenance is the desire of the shrines of the gods. In their sanctuary shall thy sanctuary be established. O Marduk, thou art our avenger. We give thee lordship over the whole world. Thou shalt take thy seat in the assembly. Thy word shall be exalted. Thy weapon shall not lose its power. It shall break in pieces thy foe. O Lord, defend the life of him that entrusteth in thee. But as for the god who undertook evil, pour out his life. Then they placed among them a garment, and unto Marduk, their firstborn, they spoke. Thy destiny, O Lord, is supreme among the gods. To destroy and to create when thou dost command, it shall be fulfilled. To destroy and to create, when thou dost command, it shall be fulfilled. Thy command shall destroy the garment, and if thou dost command, the garment shall be intact. Then he spoke with his mouth, the garment was destroyed. He commanded again, the garment was restored. When the gods his fathers beheld the efficacy of his word, they rejoiced, they paid homage, Marduk is king. They bestowed him upon the scepter, the throne, the palu. They gave him an invincible weapon which destroys the enemy. Go and cut off the life of Tiamat. Let the wind carry her blood into secret places. After the gods his fathers had decreed for the Lord his destiny, they made his way a path of salvation and success. He made ready the bow, 
anointed it as his weapon. He seized a spear. He fastened. He raised the club. In his right hand, he grasped it. The bow and the quiver he hung at his side. He put the lightning in front of him. With flaming fire, he filled his body. He made a net to enclose Tiamat within it. He set it up at the four winds, that naught of her might escape. At the south wind, in the north wind, in the east wind, in the west wind, beside he attached the net, the gift of his father Anu. He created an evil wind, a tempest, a hurricane, a fourfold wind, a sevenfold wind, a whirlwind, a wind beyond compare. He sent forth the winds which he had created, the seven of them, to disturb the inner parts of Tiamat. They followed after him. Then the Lord took the flood, his mighty weapon. He mounted the chariot, the storm incomparable, the terrible. He harnessed four horses and yoked them to it. Destructive, pitiless, overwhelming, swift. Their teeth carry poison. They know how they are trained to trample underfoot. Fearful are they in battle, left and right. His garment, he was clothed with terror. With overpowering brightness, his head was crowned. He took his road, he followed his path. Toward Tiamat, the raging, he set his face. On his lips he held, he grasped in his hand. Then they beheld him. The gods beheld him. The gods his fathers beheld him. The gods behind him. And the Lord drew nigh. He gazed upon the inward parts of Tiamat. He perceived the design of Kingu, her spouse. As he gazed, he was troubled in his motions. His resolution was destroyed. His action was disordered. And the gods, his helpers, who marched at his side, beheld their leaders, their vision was troubled. But Tiamat uttered a cry. She turned not her neck. With full lips, she held fast rebellion. Thy coming as a lord of the gods, from their places have they gathered, and thy places are they. Then the lord raised the flood, his mighty weapon, and against Tiamat, who was raging, he sent it with the words. Thou hast made thyself great, thou hast exalted thyself on high, and thy heart has moved thee to call to battle. Their fathers, there, thou hast, thou hast exalted Kingu to be thy spouse, thou hast him to issue decree like Anu, thou hast followed after evil, and against the gods my fathers thou hast wrought evil. When thou hast prepared thy army, hast girdled on thy weapons, come on, I and thou, let us join battle. When Tiamat heard these words, she was beside herself, she lost her reason. Tiamat cried wildly and loudly. She trembled, she shook to her foundations. She recited an incantation, she uttered her spell. And the gods of the battle consecrated their weapons. They advanced Tiamat and Marduk, counselor of the gods. To the combat they marched, they drew nigh to battle. The Lord spread out his net and caught her. The storm wind that was behind him, he let loose in her face. When Tiamat opened her mouth to the widest, he drove in the evil wind that she could not close her lips. The terrible winds filled her belly, and her heart was taken from her, and her mouth she opened wide. He seized the spear and tore her belly. He cut her inward parts, he pierced her heart. He made her powerless, he destroyed her life. He cast down her body and stood upon it. When he had slain Tiamat, the leader, her power was broken, her army was scattered. And the gods, her helpers, who marched at her side, trembled and were afraid and turned back. They broke away to save their lives. But they were surrounded. They could not escape. He took them captive. He broke their weapons. In the net they were thrown. In the snare they remained. The... Of the world they filled with cries of sorrow. They bore his punishment. They are shut up in prison. And on the eleven creatures, which were full of fearfulness, upon the troop of devils, who marched before her, he cast fetters upon them. Their side he... Them in their opposition he trampled under his feet. And Kingu, who had been exalted over them, he conquered. And with the god Duga he counted them. He took from them the tablets of destiny, which belong not to him. He sealed them with a seal and laid them in his own breast. After he had conquered and cast down his enemies, and he had beaten down the arrogant enemy, and had fully established Anshar's victory over the enemy, and had attained the will of Nidamud, and over the captive gods he made the prison fast. Then he turned back to Tiamat, whom he had conquered. And the Lord stood upon the foundations of Tiamat. With his merciless club, he broke her skull. He cut through the channels of her blood. He made the north wind bear it away to secret places. His fathers saw, and they rejoiced and were glad. Presents and gifts they brought unto him. Then the Lord rested. He gazed upon her dead body. 
As he divided the flesh of the, he devised a cunning plan. He split her open like a flat fish into two halves. One half of her he established as the covering for heaven. He fixed a bolt. He stationed a watchman. He commanded them not to let her waters come forth. He passed through the heavens. He considered its regions. He set himself over against the deep, the dwelling of Nidimud, and the Lord measured of the construction of the deep. And he founded Ishara a mansion like unto it, the mansion Ishara which he built like heaven. He caused Anu, Bel, and Ea to inhabit in their districts. The fifth tablet. He made the stations for the great gods, the stars their images as the stars of the zodiac he fixed. He ordained the year, he marked off its sections. For the twelve months he fixed three stars for each. After he had fashioned images for the days of the year, he founded the station of Nibir, to determine their bounds. None that might err or go astray, he set the station of Bel and Ea by his side. He opened the gates at both ends. He made strong the bolt on the left and on the right. In the midst thereof he fixed the zenith. The moon god he caused to shine forth. To him confided the night. He approached him, a being of the night, to determine the days. Every month, without ceasing, like a crown he made him, saying, At the beginning of the month, when thou shinest on the land, thou shalt show the horns, to determine six days. And on the seventh day let the tiara disappear. On the fourteenth day thou shalt stand opposite the half. When the sun god on the foundation of the heaven, thee, thee thou shalt cause to, and thou shalt make his, onto the path of the sun god thou shalt approach. And on the day thou shalt stand opposite, and the sun god shall, to traverse her way. Thou shalt cause to draw nigh, and thou shalt judge the right, to destroy me from an Isagil to establish the stations of the great gods, the gods, he took and... The gods his fathers beheld the net which he had made. They made the bow that it was skillfully made. The work which he had done they praised. When Anu rose in the assembly of the gods, he kissed the bow, saying, It is. And thus he named the names of the bow, saying, Longwood shall be one name, and the second name shall be... And its third name shall be the bow star, in the heaven. Then he fixed a station for it. After the destiny of, he set a throne, in heaven, him, them, him, them, there may, the gods spoke, the heavens. Your son, are, he hath, he hath cause to live, splendor, not we. The sixth tablet. When Marduk heard the word of the gods, his heart moved him, and he devised a cunning plan. He opened his mouth, and unto Ea he spoke. That which he had conceived in his heart, he made known unto him. My blood will I take, and bone will I fashion. I shall make man, that man may. I shall create man who shall inhabit the earth. Let the worship of the gods be established. Let their shrines be built. But I shall transform the ways of the gods, and I shall change their paths. Together they shall be honored, and unto evil shall they. And Ea answered him and spoke the word. The... Of the gods I have transformed, and one shall be destroyed, and men will I, and the gods, and they, and the gods, the gods, the Anunnaki, when they rejoiced. In Upshukinaku they set their dwelling. Of their heroic son, their avenger, they cried. We whom he succored. They seated themselves in the assembly. They named him, and they all cried aloud. They exalted him. The seventh tablet. O Asari, bestower of fruitness, founder of agriculture, thou who didst create grain and plants, who caused the great herb to spring up. O Asaru Alim, who is great in the house of counsel, who is full of counsel. The gods paid homage, fearing. O Asaru Alamnuna, the great, the light of the father who begat him, who orders the decree of Anu, Bel, and Ea. He was their patron, he ordained there. He whose provisions in abundance he goeth forth. Tutu, the creator of their renewal, is he. If he consecrates their sanctuaries, then are they satisfied? If he make an incantation, then are the gods appeased? If they attack him in anger, he will cast them down. Let him therefore be exalted, and in the assembly of the gods, no one among the gods can rival him. Tutu is the Ukina, the life of the host of the gods, who established for the gods the brilliant heavens. Their way he appointed, their path he ordained. Never shall his deeds be forgotten among men. 
Tutu as Ziazag, thirdly they named, Maker of Purification, the God of the Good Wind, who hearkeneth and is benevolent, who createth fullness and plenty, who foundeth opulence, who maketh all that is small great. In sore distress have we proven his beneficent wind. Let them honor him, praise him, bow humbly before him. Tutu as Aga Azag may mankind forthly magnify, the Lord of the pure incantation, who makes the dead living, who for the captive gods proved his piety, who removed the yoke from upon the gods his enemies. To appease them he created humanity, the merciful, to whom belongs the bestowing of life, May his word endure, may it never be forgotten in the mouth of humanity, whom his hands have created. Tutu as Muazag, fifthly, his pure incantation may their mouth pronounce, who through his pure incantation hath destroyed all the evil ones. Shag Zhu, who knoweth the heart of the gods, who seeth through the innermost part. The evildoer, he suffereth not to go out with him. Founder of the assembly of the gods, their heart who subdueth the disobedient, director of the righteous, giving the right, who rebellion and Tutu Azizi, -si, the who put an end to anger, who Tutu as Sukkur, thirdly, destroying the enemy, who put their plans to confusion, who destroyed all the wicked, let them. He named the four quarters of the earth, mankind he created, and upon him understanding, the mighty one, Agi, the creator of the earth, the chief of all lords, supreme is his power. Ungal Durmak, the king of the band of the gods, the lord of rulers, who is exalted in a royal habitation, who among the gods is exalted. Adununa, the counselor of Ea, who created the gods his fathers, unto the path of whose majesty no god can ever attain. In Dual Azag he made it known, pure is his dwelling. Of those without understanding is Lugal Duozaga, supreme in his power. There, in the midst of Tiamat, of the battle, him, the star which shineth in the heavens, he who taketh the beginning and the future, may they look unto him, saying, He who passed through the midst of Tiamat, without resting, let his name be Nibiru, who seizes the midst. He upheld the paths for the stars of heaven, like a flock all the gods together do pasture. He conquered Tiamat, he troubled and ended her life. In the future of mankind, in the aged days, sing without ceasing, let him rule forever. Since we created the heaven and made the earth, the lord of the world, has Father Bell called his name. The names which all the Agigi did name. Ea heard and his heart was rejoiced. He whose name his fathers have magnified, shall be even I, his name shall be Ea. The whole of my orders shall he control, the whole of my commands shall he pronounce. By the name of fifty did the great gods make known his fifty names, they made his path lofty. Let them be held in remembrance, and when learned let one make them known. The wise and the understanding shall consider them together, the father shall repeat them and teach them to his sons. They shall be in the ears of the shepherd and the sheep driver. Let man rejoice in Marduk the lord of the gods, that he may make his land fertile, and that he may have prosperity. The word is established, his command is unchangeable. The word of his mouth no god hath annulled. When he looketh in anger, he turns not his neck. When he is wroth, no god can face his indignation. Wide is his heart, broad is his compassion. The sinner and the evildoer in his presence, they received instruction, they spoke before him. On to, of Marduk may the gods, May they, his name, they took and...